head. I see you staring at that number one contender. It's Nation Night Fights, and I want that title. That's right. Let's hit that bell, player. Let's get this rumble rolling. Let's go. Is you nervous, Cuddy? Yeah, I see you sweating. I see you. Ain't no time to turn back now. No. Is that bell, player? It's time to go now, Trick. What you saying? Yeah. Ain't no time for backing out now. I'm coming at your orthodox stance yeah. there. Finna switch it up when I'm ready with your player. Hit you with that official southpaw pride. Come toss me that combo now. Before I throw this left and make you wobble, child. Do it. Oh, you gonna be hard headed now? Oh, Screw yeah. it. I'm coming at you, Iron Mike style. Yeah. Dropping you to the campus right now. right player nation welcome to nation night fights your boxing report weekly with your boy hijack a mic what's happening nation welcome to the fourth edition of nation night fights a boxing weekly report for the week of 4 15 21 recapping the past week's fights and upcoming fights with news also in the boxing world. I am your West Coast boy, Hijacker Mike. I was on vacation last week in Vegas, so I couldn't give a report. So I'm going to kind of squeeze a little bit of two weeks ago in with last week in this report. Two Saturdays ago on 4-3-21 from Caesars Palace in Dubai. In the junior lightweight division, a 12-round contest for the WBO world title, we had Jamil Herring, 23 wins, two losses, no draws, with 11 coming, by the way, a KO, as he beat Carl Frampton, 28, two losses, zero draws, with 16 KOs in the sixth round by TKO. Frampton was knocked with a left jab in the fifth and down twice in the sixth before the fight ended. The first knockdown came when Herring hit a short left uppercut to the face of Frampton, dropping him instantly. The second was a flurry of shots from Herring that left Frampton standing very wobbly and dazed before the fight was stopped. He now has some options that await for him with Herring wanting to unify the division with the WBC junior lightweight champion Oscar Valdez. But the WBL has ordered the winner from this fight to face the winner of upcoming bout between Shakur Stevenson and Jeremiah Nakathila. Shortly after the fight, Frampton announced his retirement from the sport. He said if he lost this fight, this was what he would do. He wants to dedicate his life to his family now. After a solid career with a 28 win, two loss, no draw, and 16 KOs during his career spanning over 12 years professionally, turning pro back in 2009, June. On the undercard, Donnie Nietes defeated Pablo Carrillo via unanimous decision with the score of 99-91, 98-92, 96-95 in the junior bantamweight division. Also, Keyshawn Davis defeated Richmond Ashley by fourth round TKO in the junior welterweight division. Also, from Saturday, 4-3-21 from Humo Arena in Uzbekistan, MJ Akhmedaliyev, nine wins, no losses, no draws, six KOs, beat. Ryosuke Awasa, 27 wins, four losses, zero draw with 17 KOs with a fifth round TKO and a scheduled 12 round super bantamweight division bout unifying the WBA and IBF titles in the division. Also, Israel Madrimov beat Emani Colombo in this 10 round super welterweight division contest by unanimous decision with the scorecards as 100 to 89, 99 to 90, and 98 to 92. Also, Shakram Giyasov, 11 wins, no losses, no draws, nine KOs, beat Patricio Lopez Moreno, 28 wins, four losses, zero draws, and 20, by the way, of KOs by knockout in the third round in this scheduled 10-round bout in the super lightweight division. From this past Saturday, April 10th, from Wembley Arena in London, Connor Ben, 18 wins, no losses, and 12 by the way of KO, won by TKO within 80 seconds of the fight in the first round versus Samuel Vargas, 31 wins, seven losses, two draws, 14 by the way of KO in this 10 around scheduled welterweight division contest. Ben tore past Vargas with power and speed from the bell. The ref had no choice to step in and stop this bout before Vargas took a brutal shot to be KO'd in that round. On this undercard, Savannah Marshall, 10 wins, no losses, 8 wins by KO, K-1, 
KO'd in the third round, Maria Lindbergh, 19 wins, seven losses, two draws, 10 by the way of KO, and this women's middleweight division retaining her WBO title, scoring two knockdowns in the third round when Lindbergh decided not to get up from the second knockdown. Shannon Courtney, seven wins, one loss, three by the way of KO, got a unanimous decision in 10 rounds versus Ibani Bridges, five wins, one loss, two KOs, with a scorecard of 97 to 94, and the two other judges had it 98 to 92. Also, Cash Farouk, 15 wins, one loss, six by the way of KO, got a 10 round unanimous decision versus Alexander Espinoza, 20 wins, three losses, two draw with eight KOs, winning this minor regional WBA bantamweight belt. Judges had this bout scored as 97 95, 97 94 and 97-93 for Farouk. Nick Campbell, 11 wins, five losses, three KOs, TKO'd in the second round. Petre Frolic, two wins, 31 losses, and one draw with one KO in this heavyweight bout. Campbell, a 31-year-old, six foot seven inch former rugby player, knocked down early in the second round, and then within 40 seconds of the start of this round, the refs stepped in and stopped the fight. Results from Osage Casino in Oklahoma this past Saturday, 4-10-21. Joe Smith Jr., 27-3, 21 by the way of KOs, beat Maxim Vlazov, 45 wins, three losses, and 26 KOs by majority decision in their 12-round WBO World Light Heavyweight Championship bout. The three judges had the scorecards as 115, 112, 115, 113, and 114 even in favor of Smith Jr. On the undercard, Jared Anderson, nine wins, no losses, eight by the way of KO, beat Jeremiah Caprici, 16 wins, two losses, one draw, six by the way of KO, in a scheduled eight rounds in the heavyweight division bout with a second round knockout. And another bout, F.A. Ajagba, 15 wins, no losses, 12 KOs, beat Brian Howard, 15 wins, 5 losses, 12 by KO, by a knockout in the third round. This was a heavyweight bout set for 10 rounds. In the third round, Ajagba hit Howard with a right hook to the left ear, the side of his face, and it was good night. The announcers in the replay said it sounded like a gun going off when the shot was hit alongside Howard's face. Also from the Mohegan Sun Casino in Connecticut this past Saturday, 4-10-21, Jerwin Ancahas, 32 wins, one loss, two draw, 22 coming by the way of KO, beat Jonathan Javier Rodriguez, 22 wins, one loss, 16 by way of KO, by unanimous decision in this 12-round bout for the IBF Super Flyweight Championship. The judges' scorecards were 115 to 112, 116 to 111, and 117 to 110. Also, Imantes Stanionis, 13 wins, no losses, 9 by the way of KO, beat Thomas Dulorme, 25 wins, 5 losses, 1 draw, 16 by the way of KO, by unanimous decision in this 12-round welterweight division matchup. Judges' scorecards were as followed, 115 to 113, 116 to 112, and 117 to 111 in this WBA eliminator bout. Jerron Boots Ennis, 27 wins, no losses, 24 coming by the way of KO, knocked out in the sixth round. Sergey Lipinets, 16 wins, two losses, one draw, 12 by the way of KO. This was a scheduled 12 round bout in the welterweight division. Ennis came out swinging from the first round bell. In the fourth round, Ennis hit Lipinets with a uppercut dropping him to the canvas. But it was later in the sixth round as Ennis was rolling with the punches and several counters landing shots to Lipinets' head as Ennis dropped him with a left hand to the body in this fight. But it was later in the sixth round as Ennis was rolling with the punches and several counters landed shots to Lipinets' head as Ennis dropped him with a left hand to end this fight. Now, in boxing news, Ryan Garcia, 21 wins, no losses, 18 KOs, is set to fight Javier Fortuna, 36 two and one with 25 KOs in July for Garcia's WBC interim lightweight championship. As Fortuna is the mandatory challenger for the title. This fight is looking to take place in Los Angeles, 
or Las Vegas. Jason Rosario, 20 wins, two losses, one draw with 14 KOs, is set to square off against Erickson Lubin, 23 wins, one loss, 16 KO, in a junior middleweight contest. No date or venue has been set, but this showdown seems to officially come down in the coming months. As of now, Lubin occupies the number one spot in the WBC rankings. Miguel Cotto, 41 wins, six losses, 33 by the way of KO, and Juan Manuel Marquez, 56 wins, seven losses, one draw, 40 KOs, is set for a June 12th exhibition bout. The two have never met as professionals, though there were talks back in 2016 and 2017 for a fight between the two. Marquez, 47 years old, has not seen action since 2014 in beating Mike Alvarado as Cotto hung up his gloves back in 2017 after a loss to Saddam Ali. We will keep our eye on this fight to see when and where this shall happen. Report from Evander Holyfield's camp that Holyfield, 58 years old and pro record of 44 wins, 10 losses, 2 draws, 29 by the way of KO, will be stepping back into the ring in June. It won't be against Iron Mike Tyson this time around, but it is reported he will be facing Kevin McBride, 35 wins, 10 losses, one draw, seven by the way of KO in this eight round exhibition bout. Holyfield has been retired since 2011 and will make his first appearance since then, as well as McBride, 47 years old, is best known for his 2005 win over Mike Tyson. Oh, that's my time. You can reach me, Hijacker Mike, out on Twitter at Mr. Mac, that's M-I-S-T-A-M-A-C-C. You can also reach out to the show at Nation Night Fights on Twitter as well. At Nation Night Fights, that's N-A-T-I-O-N-N-9-T-F-I-G-H-T-S. Nation Night Fights. You can also follow me on YouTube at Hijacker Mike, which you will have to find until I get my first 100 followers to get my own URL. So please subscribe and follow. If you have any information in the boxing world or would like to join me on a show, a upcoming fight or boxing news, please email the show at nationnightfights at gmail.com. Thank you for joining me on this edition of Nation Night Fights and I will see y'all next week. Back to our nation sports show with the boys. Peace.